Hey guys, welcome back to Ancient Amnesia Podcast. This is Josh and Dave. And what we're going to do today is um, revisit a topic that we talked about earlier in our shows. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge topic. It's a giant topic. And um, we're going to just kind of look at you know, new research. And uh, Dave's got some new stuff he's been reading. It's, an, it's a subject that is never going to go away. I think it, it actually brought a lot of people um, out of the woodworks whenever we realized there was actual evidence, documents, written documentation, not just myths and legends. And it started to kind of get people excited. Like, wow, there was really, you know, this was a real phenomenon. And so since that's happened, I think that probably happened, what, Dave, probably about 10 years ago with some of the research with Ross Hamilton and uh, Human Newman and Jim Varia. They kind of brought a lot of this stuff back to surface. Uh, Jim Varia and his brother did a show on uncovering, um, you know, these mysteries. And, and there's also the Serpent Mound mystery that's come to light uh, uh, recently. And so all this stuff ties together, this this ancient American kind of scene. You know, were there people from other the old world? Were they here? What were they doing? What other races were here? Um, and so there's a lot to unpack. And it's something we're going to have to kind of keep coming back to and revisiting to, so that we can all get a bigger picture of what was really going on. And that's, that's our goal is to basically take the forgotten material of, of our past and, and you know, trace it out and color it in and make it as visible as possible for everyone to understand. I don't know about you, Dave, but every time I learn something new that, that kind of was outside my scope of imagining, it, it, it creates an entire new perception of the world around me, reality, history, my place in it. I mean, what, what is Giants, um, what was the first time you heard about Giants and what what did you think of whenever you started realizing there was a little more truth to this than, you know, legend and myth? Well, um, you know, those were two different times for me. You know, um, I have to say that the first time I ever heard of Giants was in church as a boy. And we were reading Genesis and uh, they started talking about it and, you know, not really asking us what we thought is as kids you know and even in our teens um but it was really to me i was in in the middle of playing uh role-playing games like dungeons and dragons and etc and uh, so to me it was really interesting you know oh, hey you know there's giants you know and I, I didn't really realize in genesis um the story was so deep you know as you started reading it as someone who would read a book and try to get into it right away uh, like you would a fiction or, or something, you know, like Game of Thrones is, is a TV show that's the same way, you know, it just draws you in. So I was drawn in by it. And, um, you know, I asked a lot of questions and a lot of the guys that were in the church just said, well, you know, we don't really talk about it that way. We don't really try to break it down. What you'll need to do is go to Bible school and, and, and college and, and, and learn what it all means. Um, so to me, that was the first time I heard about giants and anybody who was even bigger than the norm and so I started looking into it more and I never really uh, got the ability to look into things like I could until the internet arrived um, so the first time I ever heard of giants being sort of a, a real possibility or conspiracy or whatever someone might call it was uh, probably you know back when I was watching stuff like ancient aliens and that started coming out and then I started doing research because I saw those guys on there talking about it and uh, you know in the you know, in those times, there were giants, and I'm I'm thinking, man, those words were actually in the Bible, and they've they've been in in countless different interpretations of the Bible. So, for them not to cast it out and try to find some other way to word it, you know, they use the Nephilim, you know, the shining ones. You know, it all depends on which interpretation you read, but it's it's all fairly you know certain that there are giants at that time. So the first time I ever saw it was in the Bible, but the first time I ever realized the importance of it uh, as a species for us um, and where we came from uh, was probably I would have to say uh, looking at stuff like ancient aliens I saw Ross Hamilton on there uh, on a show uh, I know that uh, you know a lot of those guys visited that I know Hugh Newman's been on there um, the late Philip Coppins you know rest in peace brother uh, he, he, he did some stuff on that and um, it all just kind of came together at that point that I should take a little more time and, and look into it. And to me, it seems like there were giant people that were large. Um, the stories, you know, come through as 
uh, they might have had this particular disorder or, or that particular breeding or, you know, any of these kind of things. But I got to think that there's a reason that there was people that were very large compared to the norm. And, um, you know, that really opens up a deep rabbit hole. Right. And, um, you know, that's, I think, what a lot of people, you know, especially people that come from maybe a religious or Christian background, we, we kind of heard that there were, you know, there's David and Goliath and uh, there were giants in those days. And there's, <laughs> there's reference to it. Um, but outside of that, people don't understand that there's um, almost every single myth, Native American or European, almost every single culture has record of these uh, giants existing. So it would be harder to find a culture that didn't have some ancient text or reference to um, these existing. Um, so this is a global phenomenon. This does not escape any culture. Um, there's, And there's also smaller people talking about. So we have a lot of things going on. I think the first time I heard about it was actually through anthropological research where I realized you had this gigantopithecus creature um, <laughs> that that w- existed you know it was like a science book when I was really young and and I was you know uh, raised uh, raised Christian but I, I didn't really understood that the whole giant thing yet but I I'm, you know my parents were very balanced they gave me a lot of science information and and I just remember seeing this um, Australo uh, what was this gigantopithecus and um and i said oh my god that was a real creature and, and that also was the moment when i realized well isn't this bigfoot i mean isn't isn't this bigfoot right here i mean bigfoot was real you know to me i was like this is exactly what Big, bigfoot looks like and and it, it acted basically like big bigfoot so so at that moment i kind of thought well well are unicorns real you know and sure enough you know there was a pleistocene unicorn that existed in and things so uh you know what i hope people can understand from a conversation like this is that a lot of these kind of more uh fable uh mythos type creatures that that are in um legends and stories and histories that go through the ancient world they're based on real actual creatures and that um we've kind of been told that that they're not they're not real and and so that's what we want to do here is to kind of clear the fog and show that that giants uh, there's a lot of uh, evidence and documented uh, research that points to them existing and um and it doesn't make any sense that they wouldn't i mean we to me you know if i went and stood next to Shaq, you know he's a giant right um and so you know they they are still here um, we also have record of maximinus um or maximus thrax or maximinus thrax who was a roman emperor um eight foot six i mean that's much larger than Shaq. So you're talking about a guy who was, he was also said to be able to pull his own horse cart with his, you know, on his shoulders. He was massively strong, you know, well-documented. So, you know, we, we have true record of these, these guys existing. Um, and uh, what we want to do is just kind of make sure that everyone understands it, that even native Americans and everybody that has been here, they all say they were here. So no one's, no one's, Right. Uh, saying they weren't here. Everyone's saying they were here. It's just something that I think the modern academic um, world likes to scoff at and, and say, ah, yeah, yeah. And, and, I, and I think there's a reason for that. And maybe we can discuss that a little bit. But um, yeah, but but yeah. So so that was our that was my first kind of like boom. And then of course later on I was able to see um, things like Jim Beria and they were going wow. And and out of that, Dave. I mean, when you watched uh, Mysterious Stone Chambers and and uh, Giants, uh, the presentation by Varia when he started showing all of these town records and all of this data. Yeah. I mean, you know, can you, you know, what, you know, what does that change in your mind about ancient America? I mean, what was, what was going on here? It's not these nomadic tribes just roaming around. No, no. You, 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 you potentially had a lot of different civilizations kind of coexisting, high civilizations. Sure. Sure. You know, yeah, and, and what I liked was, uh, you know, when Jim Vieira did his show, um, the first time I ever saw him was he did a YouTube video where he was doing a, a lecture in front of some college students, I think, or maybe uh, some, uh, you know, uh, you know, a, a group of uh, peers. And um, he was just describing simple stone chambers and simple, simple stacks of stones. And but he would always say, you know, it's really these are the perfect size stone, you know, if, if you were going to carry these, you would have to be a pretty big guy. And he just kind of, you know, he didn't beat around the bush, but he just kind of would suggest, you know, that, that, you know, the people that built this were very, either very crafty or they were very large, you know, and, and, 
he's been in the mountains, West Virginia and Virginia and up in the Northeast. You know, I, I guess he's actually from the, uh, Massachusetts or something like that. So he's been all over that area up there. And, and I've personally hiked up in, you know, different areas that are, you know, just filled with all these little piles of rocks or circles, uh, stuff that you really wouldn't expect to find just hiking through a forest. And I think he put emphasis on the fact that there's a lot of stuff here in North America that's been covered up. And it's really just, it, it, there's so little evidence here because of the climatological events that have, you know, happened between now and the time we had giants. Um, you know, if we want to keep calling them giants, that's okay with me because I, I'm the same way. If I stood next to Shaq, I'd be like, hey, you're a giant, man, you know, <laughs> Sam yeah. Dunk it. So, uh, yeah, the way I see it is, you know, there, the possibility is endless. Um, the fact that we've even got giants in the storyline, I mean, all around the world, hundreds of millions of people believe in, you know, Christianity because of a, a select group of writings that are very small. You know, there, there's not a ton of real core writings, you know, other than the Bible. And, um, but it's there, you know, and so there's validity to it because someone chose to write about this. Well, the fact that giants are brought into our history um, at any rate or any level is, is right there. That's evidence enough for me to look deeper into it. And it's evidence enough for me not to discount it or be skeptic about it because if I'm being skeptic, I'm just rejecting what might, you know, break, break free and, and make me whole, you know, and learn. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the way I see it.